shootout time again, and we've got another two racy devils to tear up the Anglesey tarmac. This week, it's shooting breaks. OK, they may not look very inspiring, but hold on to your retrievers for a second, because these town and country casuals have a few secrets up their sleeves. This is the Volvo V50 T5 all-wheel drive sports sports wagon. It's the T5 bit that's really important, a five-cylinder, 2.5-litre turbocharged engine giving 220 bhp. In SE trim, it costs 27 grand. Which is the same amount as this shrinking violet, the Subaru Legacy 3.0-litre R Spec B Sports Tourer. With 245 bhp on tap, it's more powerful, but also slightly heavier and less torquey. So, which will be quickest? The T5 is Volvo's smallest estate. It comes in front-wheel drive or, like this, in four-wheel drive. And it feels massive, quite frankly. Every time you turn a corner, the whole car pitches round and, and leans in like that. And the massive steering wheel does not let you know that it's even connected to two front tyres, let alone what they're actually doing. Traction control, although I have turned it off, there is still an element of traction control that comes on when the car thinks you are going to go into a spin, which makes it very dull as a performance drive. The turbo comes in at a lowly 1,500 RPM, but there's no real mid-range boost of performance despite having six gears to stir. I know this isn't the sort of car to be chucked around a racing circuit, but it is supposed to be a sporty car and a sporty drive. But I can't feel what the tyres are doing, what the chassis is really up to. And when I try and have a bit of fun, the pesky traction control overrides me. And that's not on. OK, time for a very sensible fast lap. Volvo canters round in 57.63. Let's say you're after a new family workhorse. You're faced with a dead simple choice. You can either buy an old banger and save the money for a rainy day, or you can blow the piggy bank and get the best thing that you can afford. Option one will probably bring you somewhere like this. Volvo 940 Estate in green. I bought it last week for 695 quid, and let me tell you, it was a steal. There is absolutely nothing wrong with it. It has electric windows, even heated seats, and a vast cargo area. The 2.3-litre engine is never going to break any land speed records, but it's never going to break full stop. Like most Volvos, it's built like a brick... um... toilet, and is a thoroughly excellent way to transport a family. Option two, the one that involves emptying your savings account, could get you something like this. A Renault Modus. Bought it also last week for four and a half grand, and it is also a steal. It's only three years old, has clearly been cherished, has clever functions like a boot chute and even blinds for the back windows. Most temptingly of all, it was the first ever Super Mini to be awarded a maximum five-star safety rating from Euro NCAP, the European New Car Assessment Programme. It too is a thoroughly excellent way to transport a family. Now, here's a question for you. Imagine these two cars collide head-on, each travelling at 40 miles an hour. Think about you and the person you care most about in the whole world being involved in a crash. The question is, which one would you prefer to be in? Big old banger or state-of-the-art modern car? The estate that looks like it's built from girders or the super mini SWAT that's passed its safety exams with flying colours. Frankly, it's something even the experts are unsure about. But in a world's first crash test, we're going to find out. You see, in a few minutes, these two cars will be hurled together at a closing speed of 80 miles an hour, which is going to come off best. Ladies and gentlemen, fête vos jeux. That's French for place your bets.
Of course, the Volvo was built in a time before NCAP even existed, so it's got no official safety rating. But it has got one thing on its side, size. How can something as dainty as the Modus ever stand up to a collision with this Scandinavian brute? In its day, the 940 won awards for safety, but since then, the game has moved on massively with stuff like seatbelt pretensioners and intelligent airbags. But have things advanced enough? After all, at one and a half tonnes, the Volvo is ready to plough through anything in its path. Well, the Modus didn't get five stars for nothing. It may look cute, but it's actually exceptionally strong in the body. When they crashed this thing into a concrete block at 40 miles an hour for the frontal impact test for Euro NCAP, this driver's footwell didn't deform at all. Listen, this is a world's first crash test. We've never done this before. We don't know what's going to happen. The experts don't know what's going to happen. Oh, God, that siren means this is a very bad place to stand right now. Sus monkey. So, which car came off better in the crash? The overhead view shows how easily the very stiff Modus punches through the Volvo. While the nose of the Modus has mostly kept its shape, the Volvo has crumpled and half its nose has just disappeared. It's extremely hard to make small cars safe, but the Modus is constructed using very high-strength steel that channels the energy through the sides and subframe rather than the occupants. That Modus has basically used the entire front side of this Volvo as, as another crumple zone. It's, all that energy has pushed right into the car, and you can see it's just gone straight into the driver's side. Look, look at this door. Well. If you can talk, crawl it a door. See if we can... Right, come here, come here. Look, it's pushed the whole of the front of the car up into here. The dash has moved backwards. You can't even see his feet. That means his legs have been crushed, serious lower leg injuries. All of the steering wheels moved. Obviously, there's no airbag, so the chances are he's probably impacted the steering boss, which is head injuries. If a fireman came to cut him out of here, this is a job where they're going to be cutting him out. If we come back over to the Modus, immediately we can see we've actually got a door. Let's just... Yeah, it opens. You can see the wing's been a bit bent in, so... We're going to have to open it a bit like that, but... Come here, let's have a look. You can see that there's been much less intrusion. This guy's completely got his lower legs. It looks like he'll be able to walk out of here. He may have some lower leg injuries, but they're a lot less severe than the person in the Volvo. The airbags have deployed for both the driver and the passenger over there, and because the dash and the steering wheel haven't deformed or moved, they've probably hit them in quite an agreeable way, meaning they probably haven't got head injuries or chest injuries, certainly not as severe as the person in the Volvo. NCAP star ratings are only considered relevant when comparing cars of a similar size, as traditionally, the heavier car is always deemed to hold the advantage in a head-on crash. In this test, at least, we've shown it may be time to rethink that convention. Sweden, what do we know? Well, it's got more natural blondes than the entire population of Essex. It's got ABBA. Ikea, Chef from the Muppets, Hot Tubs, oh yeah, and Volvo. Yeah, Volvo. Makers of cars for the middle-aged. Rolling Valium. Purveyor of automotive beige. Or are they? This is the new Volvo XC70. <laughs> It's an estate car with four-wheel drive, big body mouldings and increased ride height. It's neither an SUV nor a normal estate car. Which begs the question, 
is this the best all-round car in the world or is it actually the most pointless? <laughs> to test its capabilities, we're driving round one of the harshest places on Earth, 140 miles inside the Arctic Circle. Temperatures can plunge to minus 50 degrees centigrade and the sun doesn't rise above the horizon for nearly six months of the year. If the XC70 can survive here, it can survive anywhere. To start with, I want to see how the increased height affects the ride and handling. It may help you tackle steeper slopes without scraping the bumpers, but does being jacked up compromise life on the flat? It's got three little suspension settings that you can select in the middle of the dash here. Comfort, obviously, for a more comfy ride, but slightly more body roll. Sport, that just tightens everything up. And advance, which kind of switches between the two other ones, uh, depending on how you drive the car. One way to show how car like this car is, is to do a little slalom, which I just happen to have prepared over here. This has 74 millimetres more right height, which means that when you're going into a corner, obviously the centre of gravity is a lot taller, so it should lean over more. But actually, it doesn't. It's actually quite nimble. One thing it does feel is big and heavy and solid. I mean, it should do. It's only a fat bloke short of two tons at 1,890 kilograms. Feels safe. So safe, in fact, I decided to switch off all the car's traction control systems, which was a bit of a mistake. It's only when they've gone that you realise how much work they do. It's not particularly easy to keep it in a straight line, and we're swinging all over the place. That'll be swinging, and that'll be a snowbank. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Sorry. Then I switch them back on again. Now, I'm driving the six-pot petrol, but the most popular version in the UK is going to be the D5 five-cylinder diesel. And this petrol, it's a bit brisker than you might imagine, 0 60 comes up in 8.1 seconds and it runs on to 134 miles an hour. Diesel's a little bit slower, but in this, you'll only get 25 miles to the gallon which is more like an SUV than a car. If you get the diesel, then that'll do a much more respectable 35. And there's another good reason to go for the oil burner. Prices of the diesel start at 31 grand, which is over two grand less than the cheapest petrol. This top-of-the-range SE Sport costs nearly £36,000. This Volvo's also got some fairly forward-thinking features. On the key, if you want to check whether there's someone actually hiding in your car in a potential carjack situation, you just press this little eye, and then there's a heartbeat sensor in the car that can figure out if there's anyone alive in your vehicle. It can also actually figure out whether your dog has died while you've been shopping. Allegedly. I suppose one of the big questions is, if this thing's such a crossover, has it actually got the 4x4 capability that most people are going to use? Well, we have got some fairly extreme off-roading here. This car's got what's called a Haldex 4x4 system, which means that the backs only push when the fronts start to spin. So essentially, most of the time, on a normal dry road, it's a front-wheel drive car, which is good for fuel economy. It's a clever system, but I still doubted it could deal with the hill ahead, a one-in-three icy gradient offering virtually no grip. That's amazing. So we proved its hill-climbing credentials. What about going down? The right height obviously has a big effect on where you can get to, but it's also got some fairly hardcore stuff, like this is called hill descent control. Now, if I press this button, take all my feet off the pedals. I'm not touching anything now. We're, on, we're going down a hill on sheet ice, and this is sorting it all out for me. It's not even sliding. It's something that you have on much more hardcore off-roaders, like Land Rovers and Land Cruisers. So Volvo obviously aren't afraid of this going off-road. And based on this, they shouldn't be. The XC70 may not look like a serious off-roader, but it's an immensely capable car. I've never quite been in something that feels so car-like that can do so much off-roadiness. 
It's really quite cool. Can the Superb make it three out of three with our final test? Speed. Don't mistake Mr. Setsquare here for a creaky old relic. The mid 90s Volvo 850R is an icon. There was even an incredibly successful racing car version. Thanks to a turbocharged engine, it'll do 0 to 60 in under seven seconds. Attempt to see one off at the lights in anything less than a new Golf GTI, and you could find your plums shovel to Sultanas. But what about in a Skoda estate that's beige? Off we go. Right, it's even Stevens. That's got away quick. Oh, I'm just beating it. I've just clinched him. That's impressive. Crossing the finish line at 100 miles an hour, there's just two car lengths in it. Which is not bad, considering that's 15 years old. Close, but this range-topping V6 Superb is faster than an 850R. Another legend pipped by the mighty Skoda. If there's anyone out there left possessing a prejudice against Skoda, this is the car that's got to change that. So, after a day in such esteemed company, does it really deserve to be called the best estate of all time? Do you know what? I think it does.